Hello everybody and welcome to Stellaris. Now this is one of my very favorite games, um, but I've never actually played it all the way through to the end game crisis. I usually drop out around mid game uh, when the uh, story elements start to slow down, uh, but this game I am determined to make it all the way through to the end game crisis and to beat it. Um, and who knows what else we'll get up to during this long playthrough. Uh, we are going to focus more on role playing, um, so we might not always be making the most optimal decisions in terms of uh, gameplay, but we're going to be making the decisions that feel right for the Empire that we are playing. So let's go ahead and let's jump into it. Um, so I've gone ahead and created a custom Empire called the Favarian Republic for us to play. Um, we are going to be using the Payback Origin. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the Payback Origin, uh, the TLDR is that we have been uplifted technologically by an alien species known as the, uh, I think it's like MSI is what they're called. Um, and in the process of uplifting us, uh, they deceived us and they tried to enslave and subjugate our planet. Uh, we rose up in rebellion and won our freedom uh, the hard way. Uh, and so we start out with very little infrastructure. We start out behind technologically um, because we are a fledgling spacefaring civilization uh, and we start out with uh, the aftermath of this great battle uh, to clean up and, and figure out. Um, so naturally our empire I have chosen to be egalitarian, xenophobic, and militarist. Um, I chose egalitarian just because um, I felt like playing uh, a democracy so we're gonna be a republic this time through um, we're gonna be militarist um, because the people who are uh, leading our government were the prominent figures during the rebellion um, so our government is still very much uh, focused on military for the time being that might change later down the road but for the time being we are a militarist state um, and we're a little bit xenophobic um, we are not genocidal or anything we're just a little bit distrustful of other alien species we might encounter because our first and only encounter we've had so far with another species has been not fun we'll say um the uh uh i don't know what these are called but we've chosen a uh, distinguished admiralty and idealistic foundation um to go with our government type and yeah let's jump into it let's see what we start with um so here are my settings. I'm not going to go over all of these settings, but I will scroll through it slowly if you are curious. So you can feel free to um, pause the video and uh, take a look for yourself. The only setting in here that um, I will call to your attention is I like to set habitable worlds to 0.5 to make them a little bit more rare and valuable when you do find them. Um, I am playing with a couple mods. Um, they are mostly graphical based. Um, I really just like making Stellaris look pretty, but I actually really enjoy the vanilla gameplay of Stellaris, so I don't have much gameplay changing mods. The only real game gameplay changing mod I have is Amazing Space Battles, uh, which changes the uh, behavior of ships and battles uh, slightly to create better spacing and, and more smart behavior. But other than that, um, it's going to be a vanilla experience, a vanilla plus experience, we'll say, with the uh, extra graphics. All right, so let's read this. We had a deal. When the visitors from the stars revealed themselves, they offered us a fair contract. Technological enlightenment to be repaid in installments within a generation. Our planet was transformed into a so-called advanced civilization. Then we read the fine print. To repay our debt, they insisted we work for them on an indefinite term. When our leaders protested, the outsiders turned violent. We fought back. We won, though barely, and only after suffering sizable losses. Now our scientists have finally reverse engineered the secrets of FTL travel from the ships we destroyed. It's a big galaxy out there, but sooner or later, we're sure to meet our benefactors again. In fact, we're looking forward to it. It's time to get some payback. Let's begin. Oh yeah. Um, let me go ahead and configure my real space settings and I will be back in just a moment. Alright, so we are back. Um, we are looking at our home world of Fivaria. Um, it is a savanna world and it is heavily, heavily, heavily obstructed by all this debris from the uh, MSI warship that we 
um, fought back against and destroyed. We can see the ruins of this warship hovering above our planet as we speak. We have a uh, bright class F star um, that we are orbiting. Um, and we have almost no infrastructure whatsoever uh, in our solar system. So you can see no mining stations, no research stations. Um, we don't even have a single construction ship or science ship to start out with. Um, we've really got nothing, uh, nothing to go. Um, if we go ahead and look at our home world, Favaria, uh, we can see that we have a unified purpose modifier, which is fantastic for 20 years. Um, that's going to give us happiness, amenities, resources. Um, but the downside is um, we're starting off with 18 population and this debris field modifier. Until we can clean up all this debris around our planet, we're going to be suffering minus 30% habitability, um, up uh, building and district costs, up building and district upkeep. Yeah, not great. Um, we do start with 33% uh, devastation, which is why our housing is so low, but as this devastation goes down, um, our housing will increase over time. So I'm not too concerned about that for the moment. Um, we do have gene clinics built on our planet from our alien visitors, um, uh, but uh, not much else in the way of buildings. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's choose our starting research so we can get this game unpaused. Um, we don't start the game with basic technologies that every other empire does. So we need to research uh, the scientific method to get access to research labs. Um, we also need to research planetary government to unlock planetary administration. And we need to unlock uh, Corvettes for ourselves. So those are going to be our first three technologies that we're going to knock out straight out of the way. We have a couple available leader traits. We had Distinguished Admiralty as one of our civics. So uh, our generals start at level three. So let's go ahead. Um, our commissary general is our ruler, so let's go ahead and give our ruler um, Yeah, let's give him Council agenda speed and let's increase our leader experience gain as far as our minister of defense goes This is the person who's going to be leading our fleets. So right now they have ship hull points increased um, for unyielding and I think we might also want to increase our ship weapons damage yeah we're not gonna be needing this person as a general probably anytime soon so I say we I say we keep increasing hostility we get our ship damage up um, right we don't have any ships to speak of, so I think our very first priority is going to be to get a construction ship so that we can start building some mining stations around our um, solar system. So, I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game. And once we start getting some mining stations, I'm going to see about um, sorting out our planet as well. We have a whole bunch of blockers. Um, from all the ship debris that's on our planet and clearing these blockers is actually pretty lucrative for us as we'll see um, That'll just cost us some energy, which we don't have right now All right, so we've got our construction ship. Um, I apologize if I was a little bit late on realizing that was done constructing uh, we'll go ahead and move it over here and we'll start building some mining stations. I think we'll start out with a mining station around this asteroid and a mining station around our star to get some uh, energy and minerals up and going uh, right now. While that construction is going, First contact protocols. Our first encounter with alien life forms left us wary of others. There's life out there, and while exploring the galaxy, we will doubtlessly meet intelligent life again. But the manner of our greetings is still up for debate. The response is unanimous. The best way to avoid a second invasion is to assert dominance over others before they can harm us. No more will we bow to the will of Xenos. Um, so I think there is an argument to be made against hostile and aggressive first relations. But I think giving our vulnerability in the fact that our homeworld is completely devastated from a war with uh, aliens, 
I don't think our populace would be really eager to get into another costly conflict with any other species we might meet. So I think we're going to seek cautious. Um, and I think we're just going to try to keep to ourselves as much as possible, right? Um, we really just want to be left alone at this rate. All right. The battle against the alien invaders left our home system full of debris, shattered warships, and broken promises. The sheer amount of flotsam cluttering the area has made it harder for us to develop satellites and to launch spaceships from Favaria. Under the proposed cleanup project, specially designed construction ships will utilize nets to dredge the space in near orbit, allowing us to approach the MSI warship that still looms over our capital. All right, we will begin the orbital the orbital debris cleanup project. Situation log updated. And I believe for this, yeah, we need to use a construction ship. So let's queue that up for our construction ship. Yes. Let's research the project after we're done building our two um, mining stations. We're going to move to that complete. project. And I think we'll get another construction ship um, up and going once we have 100 alloys. Construction complete. We finished our mining station. That's great. I just wanted to look at what our situation is. So it looks like we're on the very edge of the galaxy, which is uh, defensively pretty nice. It looks like we kind of have a cul-de-sac here. So we really only have one access uh, direction into the galaxy and it's going to be kind of upwards here. Um, uh, looks like we have an Arctic size 19 world up here. Um, we are Savannah preference, so colonizing that is possible, but it's not going to be um, super easy for us to do. Um, let's see about... Yeah, we have 99 alloys. So once that takes over, we will go ahead and get... Um, I said we were going to get another construction ship to get our economy up and going, but I actually think I want to get a science ship. We need to start exploring. Um, because all this time that we are spending in our own solar system and not exploring other solar systems is time that we are falling behind. Who knows what our neighbors have in store for us. We want to be ready. I love the new textures um, that I got with um, uh, my mod. I think this is from uh, something like Immersive Galaxy. Yeah, I think it's Immersive Galaxy. Um, great, so we have a science ship. Let's go ahead and assign our head of research, who currently has leader lifespan plus 10. Okay, that's a very meh um, leader trait. And let's start exploring out this way. And we will get another construction ship next, and then maybe another science ship. Let's see what our leader caps are. No, I can't click that for leaders anymore. There's a button over here. Okay, so we can get three scientists. So I think we're going to want to max out Council and get all three ready. of those scientists, because exploring is going to be super important for us. We can launch infinite opportunities for extra happiness, and we can start a new agenda... I think we're going to take Evolving Society for some extra unity. Now, I thought we had queued up a construction um, of a mining station over Fevnor, but I guess we'll have to do that after the cleanup. Looks like our cleanup is about halfway over. The cleanup operation on our system is well underway. The amount of debris over Favaria has been significantly reduced, and with the clearing skies, our expectations for the future are also bright. Work continues, but things are looking better. All right, keep it up. Yes, let's check how our home world is doing. Okay, we're good on housing now. This is only gonna go up as this devastation keeps decreasing, and we're gonna get rid of this debris field soon. Um, in the time being, we almost have enough energy to consider removing one of these blockers. And I think the first thing we're going to go for is sprawling slums, because that's going to give us a free pop. And then we will consider clearing all that ship debris, because that will give us um, extra alloys. And that will also give us... 
Um, that will also give us some unity, which is going to help us discover these traditions. Uh, I like to start the game with discovery, um, and I think that's very updated. fitting for our situation. Right now, we are sifting through the ruins of our alien invaders, and we are trying to uh, catch up to their technology. We're trying to learn about their technology. So I think we need to focus on science for the time being. So yes, we're going to adopt this tradition. Council agenda available. Um, discovery is going to give us plus 10% research speed. Um, and it's going to give us access to a new edict. So let's go ahead and read this pop-up. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Favaria. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus the planetary survey on habitable, life-bearing worlds. I agree. We need to get some extra colonies up and going, so let's check out these habitable, life-bearing worlds. Um, we were going to check out our policies and edicts. Um, diplomatic stance, expansionist, I think that's fitting for what we're trying to do right now. Unrestricted wars, yeah, we're militarist. Um, in terms of vassalage, I don't think we would be oppressive like we were on the receiving end of that. We Block were being clear. oppressively vassalized and I, I don't think we would appreciate that. I think we would probably be pretty balanced. Um, it's gonna be really situational. Um, Orbital bombardment, discriminate, surrender acceptance, yes. Pre-FTL interference. Now I'm going to turn this to non-interference because we were, not too recently, pre-FTLs ourselves. And the only reason we got into this huge mess was because of interference. So we are going to protect any FTLs within our borders and maybe even push to protect FTLs outside of our borders in the um, United Nations, I, I don't know what it's called, the Galactic Council, whatever that forms. Um, resettlement prohibited, good. Initial border status closed, yeah. We're, we're, we don't trust any anyone else until they prove us that they're trustworthy. Um, I think we are going to outlaw slavery, okay. Um, and I think for purge, only displacement. Um, but I don't think we're going to be purging too many people. We just... We really want to keep to ourselves, but we're not into any horrible, horrible things. Um, let's get our construction ship building the rest of the mining stations in our system. And we have enough for another science ship. So we can get our second science ship and we'll start exploring up this way with our second science ship. Special project complete. The cleanup operation is now complete. With our skies free from debris, our science ships are now able to approach the warship safely and explore the wreck. Let's commence the cleanup. Alright, and that unlocks an archaeological site on our home world, um, which lets us uh, board the MSI warship that we destroyed and try and reverse engineer some of its technologies. Um, so this is going to be our governor of our home world. So let's see what we can get. Um, I think pop growth speed and food from jobs. That's going to be really important for us. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we can see our home world is completely, um, completely cleaned up. And we can build a mining station with our other construction ship. And we have a second science ship. Let's see if we can hire on... Anomaly discovery chance is pretty good. Yes, and I see there's an upgrade for our head of research and we are going to give... Roamer, or extra survey speed. Okay, with our um, new science ship though, Let's go ahead and let's start excavating this site. I know I said we were going to explore upwards, and we will. Um, but I really want to get started on this archaeological site here. Um, we need to figure out what we can from this um, warship <sighs> hovering over our planet. It's kind of um, concerning.
This is a gorgeous skybox for our main system. Okay, and on Favaria, we only have one open job, and we need some more consumer goods, so I think we're going to build an industrial district. And then I think we can start clearing some of these ship debris. Yeah, it's gonna cost 300 energy credits. 100% on board with that. All right. So we'll wait a couple more ticks and once we can afford it, we will get our third scientist that we can afford so that we can start exploring up here. And here's our shipyard and let's get that science ship building. Another resource that's looking kind of concerning to me at the moment is food. So after we're done building this industrial district, I am going to construction do an complete. agricultural district. Um, our complete. next scientist is ready to go. Um, we can choose a new research. So I'm going to choose lump sum of unity. Sounds good. And unity plus 5%. That's going to be fantastic for us. Um, I never usually go for global energy management. It just never seems that good. We don't really have any ships whatsoever to speak of, so I think we're gonna go for research station output. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And our new construction ship, we can move down here, uh, getting ready to colonize a new system. And our science ship, let's get exploring up. This way. First, we need to hire a new scientist on. Um, all of these are like governor and um, counselor traits. So I'm just gonna go for leader experience gain. I'm gonna see what's up this way. Let's check out this system. I love the look of trinary systems in this game. It looks like we have a giant um, bright main secret store and like are, these must be the red dwarfs. The Gruner. The ISS uh, Yavaldine crew are eager to report they have uncovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring species on Rubis 3A, um, who appear to have inhabited the planet some 7 million years ago. Wow. Here's Rubis 3A. While it is unclear why the species, who call themselves the Gruner, disappeared from the Rubis system, our scientists have isolated a promising archaeological dig site on their planet. Perhaps further study will you have more clues. Curious. All right. So we've got a precursor to look into. These Gruner. We got to find out what they were doing here in our system. This is not a precursor I think I have ever gotten. So this will be exciting to figure out. System survey complete. Okay. Our scientist has finished surveying the Ruby system, and. I think, yep, one of our construction ships is on the way, and we will actually go ahead and build a starbase once we get the alloys for it, at least. I mean, in terms of resources, it's not that great. So maybe we hold off and figure out where we actually want to expand to first, because we will be running, um, running up on an influence cap for how far we can expand. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I don't think this Arctic world is going to be worth Construction complete. inhabiting for us. It's going to be like 20% in habitability or something. Um, interference. Ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Jotham system. 100 days? Yeah, let's figure out what this, interfer this interference is. Now, we're supposed to get one guaranteed habitable world, and this isn't it because this is an arctic world, so I'm kind of waiting to see where that guaranteed habitable world is going to be, and then we'll expand out that way. Um, I'm going to get another scientist to help us because Anomaly found. I think... No, we have three of three. Um, what's this anomaly? By chance, we stumbled upon a faint alien signal during the survey of this planet. The source appears to be a small object in orbit. The signal contains no message. Could it be a distress transponder? 100 days? Let's figure it out. Alright, this is for those uh, unexplained interference patterns. Um, the ISS to Aram crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Jaltham system. A signal is a song. A complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, to be precise, and one that science officer cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown, though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside the galaxy. Wow. Outside the galaxy. I wonder if we'll ever meet those folks. I absolutely love this mod I have for the uh, galaxy graphics. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous and I've um, I've made the hyperlanes a little bit more faint so we can appreciate how pretty the galaxy looks. All right, we've got a new science ship up and running. Um, I don't know what the penalty for going above our leader capacity is, but I think I'm going to eat it because there is a tradition in the discovery tree that gives us an extra scientist. And we'll get an archaeologist. An abandoned life pod was detected in close orbit of Urak-1. It is covered in scorch marks, presumably from when a pod's mothership exploded, and preliminary scans suggest it was built more than 5,000 years ago. The crew of the ISS Yavaldim has managed to open the pod, revealing uh, withered remains of a reptilian alien clad in resplendent uniform. Clutched in one of its claws was a small picture of another individual from the same race, possibly a mate or a revered leader. How interesting. All right, the plot thickens. We have found evidence of other life in the galaxy besides us and our invaders. Um, right, we have an archeologist, so I'm actually gonna move this scientist to go explore over this way. And I'm gonna use our archeologist to continue excavating the site. Research complete. And we have access to Corvettes. I think we are going to go for coil guns. Even though I don't use coil guns in the early game, I think um, it's still worth researching just so that for the late game, we will have that technology already researched. Um, Blocker cleared. Great, we cleared one of the uh, ship debris on our planet and uh, it gave us access to Unity and a new research option, Geothermal Fracking. Fantastic. We will use that Unity to get more scientist capacity so we can afford the four scientists we have now. Yeah, four of four. And I think I will move this construction ship out here. And yes, we can see our world is 
30% habitability and it has fewer mining districts. So that's fine. I don't build a whole lot of mining districts on my world in any case. Anomaly found. So um, that's going to be just fine. I like that it's a size 19 world. It's great for us. No special um, deposits on the planet. That's fine. A cursory scan of the planet's surface reveals a weak signal pulsing into the darkness of space on Terramata C3. Ah, that's right here. 600 days. I don't think we have three years to spend on it. Let's leave that be for now, and we will come back to that later. I think we'll go ahead and expand out here. Um, once we build the agricultural district, I think we will go ahead and replace this mineral purification plant with another research labs because if we want minerals we can build mining districts i don't like wasting a building on getting minerals that just doesn't seem worth it unless we have a specifically designated mining world construction complete all right so this scientist when they're done exploring there we'll go over and around this way Anomaly found. Atmospheric readings from Jotham B1 do not match simulated projections. All right, let's figure it out. 250 days? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and bump up our speed while not much is happening. We can always slow it down if we start to get overloaded with events. Uh, our scientist has a level up and this is not on our council so we don't need any council level things. But I do think we want to up our anomaly discovery chance. That's going to be great for us. And leader experience game or survey speed. Let's get the survey speed. We can go ahead and build a mining station, get some extra alloys, and we can build a research station. While we're doing this, let's go ahead and design our ships. I'm very particular about my ship designs. I don't like using the auto-designed ships. Um, early game, I think we're going to go all missiles, and I think we're going to go all armor on our corvettes for the early game at least. And we'll call these missile class corvettes. Auto upgrade, yes. Okay. We'll delete the auto generated one. Um, our archaeological site just uh, triggered. Our sensors cannot detect signs of life within the derelict warship, and yet the engines are still faintly abuzz and machines are at work inside the empty halls. There is good reason to believe the ship is still operational, and attempts to board it are sure to awaken its security system. We must proceed with caution. I agree. That does not bode well for us. Though the fact that it's still operational, maybe we can uh, maybe we can use some stuff from that ship. It's still working. Immense ragged planes of shadow drift across Jotham's B one's face. They are not cast they are cast not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere, hinged, or rather jointed, to allow for a small degree of articulation. Scientist Officer Gary Baerin is yet unwilling to say whether these things are flora or fauna, or what possible purpose, if any, their elaborate shadow casting might serve. Wow. Extra research. System survey complete. We're gonna give this person extra survey speed. Good work. Another scientist. Anomaly research speed or archaeologist two. You're going to be our archaeologist, so we're going to give you extra speed. Let's get this... Let's get this MSI warship figured out. Maybe we can go check out those Gruner guys. Construction complete. I'm a little bit upset that we still haven't found our second guaranteed habitable world. Anomaly um, found. We, ha we haven't found a single one yet. 
and I'd really like to get our second colony up and going. Sensors pick up rhythmic movement on the hellish surface of Jotham C2A. Rhythmic movement? On the hellish surface? Well, that does look pretty hellish. I have to agree. Figure out Anomaly what that found. We have discovered an ancient alien starship lying half buried on an asteroid crater. And the Taramda system. Yes, let's figure out what this uh, alien starship is. Is it an MSI starship? We're familiar with those. Um, the measured pounding observed from orbit is the motion of an immense and ancient geothermal extractors, grieving their last. Built then. Built and then abandoned at some point in the distant past, the vast batteries of disintegrating machinery have been pumping up the superheated fluids from the planet's core ever since. Wow, that's cool. There's storage capacitors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Their storage capacitors are all broken or leaking, but some energy can still be siphoned from them. Well, that's excellent. Anomaly found. Ooh, another um, anomaly. LA-478 is home to a number of exquisite impact craters. However, something breaks the visual uniformity in one of the larger craters. Let's figure out what that is. Um, let's expand here. I like those minerals and energy. That's going to be good for us. Um, we're not building anything on our planet, and perhaps we should be. We've discovered an ancient alien starship half buried in an asteroid crater. The science ship's exterior had an extensive sensory array and no weaponry. The exterior was not damaged in any way before it crashed. We can assume this catastrophe was the result of a fatal error caused by the crew. How tragic. Hopefully that doesn't end up like one of our scientists. Creates a seeds of destruction archaeological site. Well, that's that. Alright, and I think this is going to be a good stopping point for our first episode. Um, please do let me know uh, what you think of this series um, and any ideas you have for moving forward. Um, thank you as always for watching and uh, take care. See you next time.